EA Sports. It's in the go. Hi there guys, this is the sequel from the first video, how to beat a world star in form team with a silver team. As you may perhaps remember, I had this opponent with players like uh, Ribery, uh, Ibrahimovic, uh, Falcao and so on and so on. And I thought when I saw him, oh my god, this match is over before it began. But don't worry, I used uh, a quite good silver team, a pacey silver team. And I had some skills and tactics that I'd use against him, and you could probably do the same. So let's have a closer look at the team built with Foothead. At first we have the goalkeeper Müller. I picked him up for a thousand coins, that's really cheap, and he's incredible with his reflexes. He saves so many shots, it's just amazing. Next on the centre back position we have Bungert from Mainz. I uh, picked him up for 900 points, also very cheap. Um, I had to choose between him and Brooks, and I thought he was a little bit faster and a bit better in position, so he became my first choice. The second centre back and partner of Bungert is Ho from Augsburg. He's very tall, he's very good at heading, and he's always in position. He's a real wall in the back. But he's quite expensive, I picked him up for about 9000 coins, luck for me. On the right back side we have Dickmeyer from Hamburg, he's a real nightmare for all wingers. Uh, he's so incredibly fast, it takes a little time until he accelerates until his top speed 90. Uh, but he's also very good at heading and he's quite expensive, 15000 coins, that's a lot, but it's okay, he's got Good work rates, and so this is fine for me. On the left side, there's Staphylidis from Leverkusen. Uh, he's really, really very fast, and uh, I couldn't believe he does his job so well. Uh, an alternative would be Park from uh, Mainz, but this guy has the better work rates, so he's my first choice on the left back side. Oka from Stuttgart is the man in the center defense. Uh, I couldn't believe that he was that good, uh, he didn't seem so fast, he's quite small, not that tall, but he's got incredible work rates. he's buzzing around like a bumblebee and uh, he's really a very good choice for this position and I'm truly satisfied with him. Rojas, the man from New Zealand, from Stuttgart, is my right midfielder and he's quite fast. For him I had to make a position change from right wing to right midfield. It's okay, he's quite fast and there are no better alternatives than him. On the left side I chose Schreck from Frankfurt. Uh, he's not so expensive, he's also very fast, but like Royas on the right side, he's not so good at passing. But he's got good attack work rates and I had to choose between him and Eswan and Eswan he was just too expensive and I thought that's not worth it. So he is doing very fine and that's okay. Now this guy is a little phenomenon, Ede from Mainz, um, he's really really pacey, he's so incredibly fast and he also scores a lot of time and he is really cheap, so pick him up guys, really you won't regret it. As a right attacker I picked up Kumbela from Braunschweig, uh, he's not as fast as Cutlets on the left side, but he is quite powerful and he works really a lot, so he's very good. Uh, with his assists, and uh, he's the cheaper alternative to Maxi Beister, who really costs a lot, and so I'm very satisfied with this guy after the first few games. That's fine for me. Cutlets on the left side came to Frankfurt this year. He's my best attacker, he is incredibly fast, uh, he's always in the right position, he made most of my goals in this team, and he's not that expensive, but he will 
rise in price. So uh, pick him up, guys, uh, as long as you can, because this guy will cost a lot in a few weeks or whenever, and he's really incredible. Let's have a look at the team stats. No, there's a chemistry about 100, right? No problem. Squad rating 61. Position changes. That was Royas from uh, Stuttgart from the right wing to the right midfield. The price is uh, 41,400. I paid about um, 35,000. But I was observing the market. I was patient. I was having a little bit of luck when uh, bidding on the right player in the right moment. Uh, so you can save some money if you uh, really observe the market and if you're a little bit lucky, yeah, okay? So uh, don't worry about that. The pace, 84, that's what we wanted to have. Um, shooting passing not that much, so that's why we have to use some tactics to beat the opponent. Um, defense and headings, um, 58, 61, it's not that much, but don't worry, the center backs, they will win their headers. They are very good at heading and um, also the defense is very good. So don't worry about these stats, you will see in-game it's a lot, lot better. Now that the team is set up, let's go into the stadium and have a closer look at the match I played against this guy with his world stars and inform players. I'll explain you which tactics I used and how I got this guy into real big trouble and finally I won 3-2. Have fun! So the first thing you want to do if you have the kickoff is go on the wings because at the beginning after the kickoff the opponent has almost all his players in the middle so let's choose the wings to attack and there we go and have a little bit of space so we send my fast wingers outside well bad luck it didn't work out fine but we just go on The next important thing we want to do is um, use the pace of our players to close the spaces between the opponent's players. Um, that forces him to play his passes incomplete. And as soon as we regain possession of the ball, we try to switch into attack mode as fast as possible. And then try to finish the attack. Um, you always want to shoot and don't want to lose the ball because this means a counter attack from your opponent. So if ever you have the possibility, try to complete the attack. There we go, we shoot, and next shoot, and okay, no counter attack, but no goal. As I said before, it's very important to switch from defending into attack mode very fast, so this means a nice counter attack for you and your pacey players. As you can see here, it's almost successful. Almost the same, but in the second half, game possession, two short passes, pass, pass, long pass, and finishing. Unfortunately, not a goal yet. In the next scene, we have all the three things together. Now, high pressure from my attackers, game possession, fast turnover, and finally a finish which is successful. One touch sucker, that's it. Next thing we have to talk about is defending. As we all know, we don't have the high strength, so if we don't have the possibility to keep the pressure up in the attacking zone of the opponent, we should try to get back with as many players as possible, even if they are midfielders or even if they are attackers. Just try to have four or five players behind the ball, so that the opponent doesn't have the possibility to start a counter-attack. Also, if you're chasing up the opponent, call for help from the AE. It's always better to attack with two players if it's possible because you have four or five players behind the ball. Call the second player and finally you get the ball.
In this scene, I combine the two possibilities defend. I get as many players as possible behind the ball and let the AI attack. And finally, I get possession of the ball and switch into attack mode. What you often see is that players uh, play long passes with their goalkeepers forget about it. Find your left or right backs and suddenly you have plenty of space and crossing through the whole midfield. Um, finding my attacker who goes down the wing and he finally finds the attacker on the other side. And yeah, this is a goal. Um, you see, soccer is that easy. We're now coming to the end of this video, in the last scene with everything combined. Pressure for my attackers, um, getting behind the ball with as many players as possible, letting the AI do the work, gain possession, turnover, one-touch soccer, pass pass, long pass, and finally we've got the goal which meant the victory. I hope you enjoyed the video, if so leave a like and I hope to see you again soon, bye bye.